Hello everyone from Math 2200, Discrete Mathematics. It's Professor Wenson here again with a video on your Zybooks section 3.4 titled More Set Operations. Alright, so you saw in section 3.3 the union of two sets and the intersection of two sets. Those were two set operations. Um, in this section 3.4 we're just seeing more of those operations on sets. <clears throat> okay, so the first of these is the set difference. Um, so the difference between two sets, A and B, denoted A minus B, is the set of elements that are in A but not in B. Alright, so I'll, I'll play this animation for you. So here's, you know, set A contains the elements A, B, C, E, and F, right? Denoted by this little circle. Set B denotes the ele has the elements D, E, F, and G, right? So they do have some elements in common, right? E and F in the, in the overlap here, the intersection. Alright, well then if I go A minus B, that means I want all the elements of A, so A, B, C, E, and F, but I want to take away the elements that are also in B. So A, B, C, E, and F, but I get rid of E and F and I'm left with just A, B, and C. And right, notice they've colored this in green here. So it's just the part of the circle of A that's not also in B, right? It's A minus B. And uh, you know, if I, if I did it the other way around, it would be a totally different set, right? If you did, if you did B minus A, it would be just this set with D and G in it. Right? If you did B minus A, because it would be all the elements of B that are not in A. You take away the elements of A. So so the order matters, right? Just like in, just like when you subtract numbers, right? Order matters in subtraction in differences. Okay. All right, and then you have another another type of difference operation where basically you put together both differences um, uh, remember so if you do a minus b then you look at b minus a and kind of put them together with a union you get what's called the symmetric difference between two sets All right, so the symmetric difference between two sets a and b is denoted as a and you've seen this symbol before. This it looks like a plus sign with a circle around it. A uh, symmetric difference with B. You've seen this symbol before in the logic chapter, chapter one. Remember this symbol represented the exclusive or. All right. So if you see A symmetric difference with B. That means you have elements that are either in A or in B, but not both. All right? This is this is representing the exclusive or. So it's the set of elements that are a member of exactly one of A and B, but not both. All right? And as I mentioned earlier, you could also think of this A symmetric difference with B as A minus B union B minus A. And they show you down here. So same same sets as earlier. And I'll play the animation again. So you know here's set A with A, B, C, E, and F elements. Here's set B with D, E, F, and G elements. Then the symmetric difference, A, you know, the little plus sign with the circle around it, B, is all the elements that are just in A, so A, B, C, along with the elements that are just in B. D and G, right? But not both, right? Notice how E and F are not included, all right? So it's it's A minus B, right? The set with A, B, C, union with B minus A, right? The set with D and G, and put them all together. Put those two together, you get A, B, C, D, G, right? All the elements that are in either either in A or in B, but not both. Right? The exclusive or. All right, and another operation. The complement of a set, right, the set complement. Now again, you've seen something similar to this in the logic chapter, chapter one. 
when we talked about the complement or negation of a proposition, complement is just not. Right? Elements in the complement of a set are not in that set. So here, the, the complement of a set A, denoted by A with a bar over it. Right? So you see a bar over uh, the name of a set. That means the complement of that set. It's the set of all elements in the universal set, right? the set of everything, that are not elements of A. So an alternative definition of the complement of A, A bar, is just U minus A, right? It's, it's everything in the universal set that's not in A, right? You, all, the, all the elements of the universal set and then you take away the elements of A. All right, so uh, let me give an example here, but I'll just show, again, I'll show you this animation de de depicting the complement of a set A. So here's a universal set, right? The whole box, uh, elements one through 10 are in this entire box. And then set A contains just the elements four, five, six, and seven. All right, so the complement of A would contain all the elements in the universal set that are not in A. So one, two, three, eight, nine, and 10, as you'll see with the rest of the animation. All right, so I take the universal set and just take away all the elements of A. All right, and that's A bar or the complement of A. So one, two, three, eight, nine, ten, and they color it in as well. So all the stuff outside A in the universal set. All right. And then some descriptions again of all the all the set operations we've seen so far in sections three three and three four here. Alright, so remember the intersection was you know A and then this upside down U B. The intersection of two sets contains all the elements that are you know belonging to A and belonging to B at the same time. The union A union B contains all the elements that are in a, are belonging to A or belonging to B or both. The difference we have just seen up top, A minus B, contains all the elements that are either in A, that, well, that are in, in A and not in B, right, at the same time. You're in A but also not in B. This symmetric difference that we just recently saw a symmetric difference B, like a little plus sign with a circle around it. This is that exclusive OR. So it's all the elements that are in A minus B or in B minus A. Okay, Or you could say a, a, all the elements in A or in B, but not in both. Right? Not in both. And then as we just saw, the complement A bar here. It's all the elements in the, you know, in this, in the, in the domain, in the universal set, that are not in set A. So there's some ways to express inclusion or exclusion from these sets. All right, so then your activities, uh, uh, they, they, uh, they combine some stuff here. So remember, you just do the things in parentheses first. Now notice there's a bar above this. So that means you do the thing in parentheses, and then you do, take the complement. Right. So I'll just, I'll leave that animation to you for you to watch. And I want to get into... Uh, the challenge activities. Right? Now, these challenge activities are very similar to the challenge activity from 3.3 where you just kind of fill in certain regions uh, based on what operations are given to you. So there are five of these. I'll do two or three of them. So here I have a Venn diagram with you know A, B, set B, and then the universal set. So select the region of the complement of A, right, A bar. So remember, that's everything in the universal set that's not in A. So basically everything but the circle for A should be filled in. So like that. Right. Everything but A that's in the universal set is the complement of A. B minus A, that region there. All right. It's all the elements that are in B, but not in A. All right. So don't don't 
if I click the overlap, that those are also in A. I don't want those. All right, it's all the elements in B that are not in A. All right, let's do one more. This is that symmetric difference. So this is the elements that are in A or in B, but not both. All right, so I'm in either A minus B or B minus A, right? The union of A minus B with B minus A is the symmetric difference. All right, then you have, oh, let me do one more here. Because again, so not, not A, remember this is all not A, intersected with not B. Now not B would be everything outside B. So not A and not B. Well, what are the only only elements that are both in not A and not 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 in A and at the same time not in B? That's everything outside A and B. All, right, all these elements, every element in the universal set that's you know not in A and not in B. So I don't want any part of A or B being shaded. All right, and then the other, you can do the other one. And then this one involves three sets and. And you're doing doing the same thing. So I'm doing A minus B first, right? A minus B is in parentheses, so that's this region here. Alright, all the stuff that's in A but not in B. Alright, so I don't want any of the overlap with A and B. And then I take away the elements from C as well. So take away this part. And there, the the region that is shaded right now is the elements in A minus B and then minus C. Right? So it's basically the elements of A without elements from B and without elements from C. Now I'll just do one more of these. So this is take uh, parent again parentheses the symmetric difference between of B and A. So that's the elements in B or A but not both. So here's the elements in B that aren't in A. Here are the elements in A that aren't in B, right? So I don't have the overlap. There's the notice the symmetry, right? That's why it's called the symmetric difference of A and B. All right, and then I want elements B in the symmetric difference of B and A, also in a symmetric difference with C. So this is all the elements that are in this set, which I have shaded, or in C, but not both. All right, so here's the elements in C, and then these elements are in both, right here and here, these overlapping areas. So look at the symmetry, though. Look at how some nice symmetrical sh looking this is, right? So it's the elements you now that are in A or B, but not both, right? or C, but not all three. Right? So not uh, uh, or C, but not all three. So this picture right here. Oops, I forgot the middle. I, I oops. <laughs> yeah, because this part in the middle is not in, yeah, I forgot, is not in a, uh, uh, so I have to do another one. Uh, basically the same thing. So yeah, this was a symmetric difference. I apologize. And then I add the elements of, and then we're also going to put in the elements of C that are not in this set. So I'll circle all of C, but the ones that were in the set originally, the A plus B, the A symmetric difference would be were these two. Yeah, so I, I forgot this, these elements in C as well. I do apologize. All right. Okay. All right, now this is not, notice the bar over the whole thing. So A intersect B intersect C, that's this region here. That's A intersect B intersect C, right? Elements that are in all three, A and B and C. That's this overlap in the middle. And then what we're asked to do is give the complement of this. So everything but this region. So this, this, I'll erase this and then take everything but that middle part. That's the complement of A intersect B intersect C. Right. And again, you can continue on. If you get it wrong, it'll let you just do it again. Again, I apologize for my, my mistake. All right, so this one I'll do some writing. 
No, I'll just wait till the challenge. Eh, I'll do. I'll do the. Okay, I'll do this. I'll write these out, and then I'll do a few of these on, on paper. Okay, so I've written out the sets from that activity, and I've even expanded upon you know, the even integers for C and the odd integers for D. And I even made a little Venn diagram for this. Right now, they said the universal set was all integers. So let's say this whole page represents all integers. Now, C is the evens, D is the odds. That cuts it in half, right? You know, they say this half is the evens. You see 0, 6, 10, 14, negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, negative 8, and so on. And this half to the right of the black bar is odds, negative 3, 5, negative 7, 1, 3, you know, 3, 5, 9, 13, okay. Now, set A and set B had some overlap. They have some things in common, and they have both even and odd, so that's why they're in the middle, of the, that have the bar running through them. So here's set A, set B, and set A had 1, 2, 4, 11, and 12. Set B had 2, 4, 7, 8, and 11, and they're in their proper places, right? Uh, they, they both had 2, 4, and 11. Uh, and A only had 1 and 12, B only had 7 and 8, and you know, notice how, the, again, the odd numbers are on the right side in set D, the even numbers are on the left side in, in set C. So there's a Venn diagram for this as well. Alright, <clears throat> now we're asked to, uh, I'll, I'll do certain examples. Um, let's find, you know, A minus B intersect C. Alright, so again, with per, it's just like anything else with parentheses, I'll start with that set. Okay, B intersects C. And this is what elements are in both B and C. So the elements in both B and C, well B is this set, C is all the evens. So basically what are, what are the even numbers in both these? 2, 4, and 8. 2, 4, and 8. That's B intersect C. And you could even go to my Venn diagram here and see that you know B with C is this region here with 2, 4, and 8. And the, basically the left half of, of my B circle has 2, 4, and 8 in it, and the overlap of B and C. All right, so then we're looking at finding A minus 2, 4, 8. So what is that? I take set A and take away the elements 2, 4, and 8 if they're in there. So set A is up here with 1, 2, 4, 11, 12. And I take away the 2 and the 4. There is no 8 in, in, in set A, but I take away the 2 and the 4. So I'm just left with 1, 11, and 12. Just the set with 1, 11, and 12. And that's it for that first one. Right. A minus the quantity B intersects C. And again, you can see back here, right, B intersect C would have been this region, the left half of B, and then A minus that uh, would have been all the stuff in A that aren't in this left half of B. So one, the one, two, the the, the one, eleven, and twelve, right? The, all the junk in A that aren't in that left half of B, right? That B intersect C. Okay, uh, another one was in parentheses a minus b and then intersect c so again parentheses first a minus b right? that's all the elements that are in a but not in b right i take away the elements of b so all the elements of a here are 1 2 4 11 and 12 and I take away the elements from B that are in there, right? which are just 2, 4, and 11. I take away 2, 4, and 11. So all, all I'm left with is 1 and 12. All right, and then we're taking the intersection with set C. So what elements are in both of these? Now set C is again the evens. So this set with 1 and 12 
and the evens. Uh, basically, what, what even numbers are in both of these? That's just the number 12. So this ends up being just the set with the number 12 in it. And uh, that would be it. Okay. Alright, another one. Right, and th th this will be it. All right, I'll leave the other two to you. Now the one I have in parentheses, B union C, but then over that is a giant bar. That means complement. So I still do this B, I'm going to do B union C first, and then the bar, All right, then the complement and then intersect uh, with set A. Okay. All right, so first I'm going to do B union C. B union C. So this is all the elements that are either in B or in C, or both. So, uh, B has, you know, 2, 4, 7, 8, and 11. C has all the even integers. So I'm going to put it this way, because it, because it's because it's infinitely many, right? This union has infinitely many integers. I'm going to write it in uh, set builder notation. I'm going to say it's all the elements from the integers such that x equals some of the you know the seven or eleven. X equals seven x equals 11, or x is even, because right, all the rest of the integers in here would be even. Right? So that's a long-winded way of saying it, but there's no way I'm going to be able to list them all. Right? There's no way. So it's you know all the evens along with you know, and 2, 4, and 8 are even, and along with 7 and 11. Right? So it's just set C with uh, 7 and 11 added on. You can look at here, right? See my, my Venn diagram. See, if I do B union C, right, C is the entire left half of the page, so it includes this area, and then union B just adds 7 and 11 to it. Right. Now, what's, what's the complement of this? Right. Putting a big bar over it. Now, what's the complement of this? is everything from the universal set that's not these. All right. So if you look back at my Venn diagram, right. here's C and there's B union C right with this circle added on. So the left half of the page and then this half of the circle of B, that's B union C. Uh, the complement of this is everything else. So one, uh, basically every odd integer except 7 and 11. So a way to write that. Right. Uh, again, I'm going to write it in set builder notation. I'm going to say it's all the integers that are odd except for 7 and 11. All right. 7 and 11 belong to this set, so it's not going to be in the complement. So it's all the integers such that, you know, x is odd and you know x is not equal to 7 uh, and x is not equal to 11 okay cuz it can't it, ha it has to bo it, it, it has to be all three of these at the same time to be in that set So basically, I just negated this, right? Remember, this is like x is, x is equal to 7 or x equals 11 or. And when you negate this, use uh, De Morgan's law. Remember De Morgan's law. x is not 7 and x is not 11 and x is not even or x is odd. So I just did like De Morgan's law in that statement. Okay. Um, I guess if you wanted to write this out in roster notation, right? All the odds except for 7 and 11... You know, that'd be like this. You got like say negative three, negative one, one, three, five, and then skip seven. So nine, 
then skip 11, and then 13, 15, 17, and so on. Just making sure that you have all the it's all the odds without 7 and 11. That's B union C complement. All right, and then we're doing the intersection of this set with set A. All right, so what was set A? It was this set here with 1, 2, 4, 11, and 12. So right, we're looking for its and, right? We're looking for the elements that are in both of these. So is 1 in both of them? Yes. Is 2? No. Is 4? No. Or basically evens aren't in both of them, right? So 2, 4, and 12 aren't. 11 isn't either, right? This is all the odds except 7 and 11. So the only number that's in both of these, the only element that's in both sets is the number 1. All right, one there, one there. So this is all, after all that, this is simply the set with the number one in it. Okay. Yeah, so back on, back on the website. And now we said this one, right, was uh, the set with one, eleven, and twelve. This one I did was the set with just twelve in it. This one is just the set with the number one. Okay, and then again, you can you can do the other ones. All right. All right, and here, you're going to have to fill in your own blanks, fill in your own sets, kind of like I just did. Now, these are nice. Ho hopefully, these are most mostly be finite sets. We'll see. There are seven of these. So what's B intersect A? What do they have in common? All right, what's in both sets? So just one and six. Right? So we separate them by commas. One comma six. Now here, what's A union B? Uh, let's see, I'll start with two. You got two. It's in either one, either one, right? So you got twos, you got four and A. You got fives in both, so five. And you got sixes in both, and then you got a seven and A. Right? And that, that's the union. Uh, the minus, A minus B. So I take all the elements of A, and I take away any elements from B. So one, two, three, four. Uh, take away 4, 5, and 7. Well, the only thing I'm taking away then is 4. So all I'm left with in A minus B is 1, 2, and 3. And this is that symmetric difference. So you're either in A or in B, but not both. Not both. So I'll write all the elements of A with all the elements of B, but take away the ones they have in common. Take away the ones that are in both. Well, the ones that are in both are the 8s and the 9s. So no 8, no 9, but 1, 2, and 4 are fine. You know, 1 belongs to A, but not both. 2 belongs to A, but not both. And 4 belongs to B, but not both. Very, very simple. And again, you're doing all this. Now here's a little, maybe a little trickier. You know, B intersected with the complement of A. Right? And just like with logic, you know, you, you do your complement. After parentheses stuff, you do your knots. You do your complement. So what would be the complement of A? Well, A is all the even integers, so the complement of A would be all the odd integers, and then you're doing the intersection with B. How, uh, so it's all of B, basically. 1, 7, and 9 are in both. Right? 1, 7, and 9 are in B, and they'd be in not A. So I'll, again, I'll leave that stuff to you. You might see different problems than I do, but hopefully that's easy enough. All right, then you have exercises, right? your additional exercises. Some, some of these are in assignment 4. Uh, that you'll be uploading. <clears throat> I still recommend doing all of them, all right, just for extra practice, extra exposure to the material. And you can check your solutions to see how you're how you're grasping the material, see if it's making sense to you. Um, and please, I say this every time, please do the problems, try to work them out before you look at the solutions. Because if you're just looking at solutions and copying them down, you're not going to learn anything. And then the exams I write for you are going to be very difficult because right, you're not learning anything. Um, yeah. So and, if, and of course, if you have any questions on anything, let me know. And um, that's it for section three four. Hopefully, it's helpful. Hopefully, this video is helpful for you. And thank you very much for watching.